what's in the cup speaks for itself at the end of the day. And mm-hmm. so I think more people that have great coffee experiences off automated equipment, um, you can't really argue with the results at that point. And so I think that this trend is probably just really going to accelerate. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode one of a new five-part series with Tim Cox from Frankie. Tim, welcome to the podcast for the first time. Thank you so much for having me. There are a lot of people that are excited about this series. Uh, The people that I have told that you and I are going to have this conversation are like, ooh, this is going to be really exciting. Um, Why don't you tell people your story? And then we'll talk about why we're going to have this conversation. Sure. Um, Well, I started in coffee like uh, many do uh, at Starbucks. I was a barista in college just trying to make a few bucks. And, uh, you know, it was there that, well, maybe I didn't uh, refine my palate or necessarily fall in love with espresso. Uh, I really became enamored with the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, So as I had the opportunity to work uh, with other companies in more kind of specialty environments. Um, That is when I really, you know, I was exposed to the Specialty Coffee Association and the Barista Guild of America. And I met people that were traveling across the world to share their knowledge with everybody. And it just really seemed like an environment of a rising tide lifting all ships. And uh, I saw that there were all these career opportunities that I never considered. Um, in various segments of the industry. So I spent some time uh, on the retail side managing cafes. I spent some time on the wholesale side uh, running a roastery. Um, I opened a cafe and restaurant uh, and did that for a few years. And then I kind of uh, took a leap onto the more commercial side and I joined 7-Eleven to help lead their coffee program here in the United States. a lot of people at that point telling me that uh that i was a sellout and everything like that you know but gotta love um, coffee people don't you (laughs) (laughs) absolutely uh but to me the opportunity to you know impact the quality of that many cups for that many people was was just really exciting um you know it, it was exciting to see a more specialty mindset of coffee entering some of those segments where um you know it's less traditionally found um and then that's really where I uh, I got a lot more of exposure to automated equipment and uh, efficiencies of operating coffee programs at scale. And that led me to uh, end up here at Frankie Coffee Systems. And, uh, and I'm a marketing manager here now. So clearly you're an underachiever in the coffee industry. Yes. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> So what what we're going to talk about in this series is coffee at scale. And I want to shout out to my best friend, Angelo, because Angelo was the one that said to me, you need to speak to Tim Cox. So, and, and yeah, he's an extraordinary human. And when Angelo says, you've got to, I always say yes, no matter what's coming after it. And the thing that was really uh, like drew me to have this conversation with you was how transformational the jump from 99 cents to 199 at 7-Eleven, the, the way that that started transforming the way that the consumer started thinking about coffee. Um, and that really got me thinking about the way that that has ripple effects into the entire industry and how the specialty industry even is the beneficiary of that kind of a jump when 7-Eleven does something like that. So as we move through this series, we're going to talk about in this episode the role that automation plays in it, but we're going to cover things like data, convenience, uh, the mindset of a, of a business owner, and then we're going to talk about consumer trends. So in this episode, we want to talk about automation. In your mind, what role is automation now playing in the industry and where will it go into the future? Yeah, I mean, I think that, well, one, I think it's very encouraging to see the more specialty segment of the coffee industry warming up to automation mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, I mean, I've long been an advocate, even when I had Word. my own cafe and we were a more barista oriented sort of uh, cafe. Mm-hmm. Um 
you know, we had machines that were, they weren't super automatic, but they were auto volumetric. You know, we, we understood that there were things that we were incapable of doing as consistently as the equipment could help us do. Mm -hmm. Um, I think sometimes in coffee, there's, you know, a little bit of ego involved there where, uh, people, they want to hit the button twice instead of once, yeah. you know, um, but I think that the the role that it's playing is one, it's giving us a more consistent, better product. Mm -hmm. um, consumers want to know that they're going to get the experience that they had last time or the experience that they expect and anticipate when, when they enter your cafe. And I think automation allows us to do that. Mm -hmm. um, automation allows us to interact more with our customers. Um, you know, I've been in cafe environments where I get a great espresso, but I feel like I can't talk to anybody because everybody's laser focused looking at a scale or a timer or yeah. something like that. You know, and I think that the opportunity to enable baristas to really deliver a true hospitality experience um, it is something that customers value. I, I see that in data that I review often is that barista engagement um, makes people feel like they're getting more value for their money in a cafe experience, for example. And I think that automation just empowers us to deliver those experiences. Um, something I think is interesting is, you know, in specialty coffee, I, I'll walk around a trade show and I'll see compartmentalized automation all over the place. There's mm -hmm. uh, automated tampers. Um, there's automated milk dispensing units that give you your, your steamed milk. Um, there's now espresso machines and grinders that communicate with each other and the grinder can adjust based on the data, the uh, espresso machine delivers on the shot that it mm -hmm. just pulled. And so people are recognizing the value of all of these automated systems, but then some people feel like when you put it all together in one box, then it's not good anymore. Um, but I think that that tide is turning and, uh, I, I think that's really encouraging. Where does it go from here? I think it just keeps going where it's going. I think that, you know, it, most of my time in coffee, I've been in coffee about, about 15 years. And the first mm -hmm. 10 of that, uh, automation just really seemed like a bad word to a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think COVID accelerated a lot of trends that, that were already mm -hmm. starting to materialize. And, and I, I was surprised at the beginning, you know, 2020, everybody's trying to just stay open and a lot of people are adding walk-up windows and drive throughs and things like that. And I would just kind of, uh, you know, pull people on, on some different Facebook groups and things like that and say, are you starting to see the value in automation now in light of all this? And at first people were still kind of grumbling and, you know, like, ah, you can't get a real espresso off of a automated machine kind of thing. Um, but then I think the reality of, of, the impacts on the market forced people to have to reconsider some of these things. And then I think that's enabled a lot of people to kind of open their eyes and their minds a little bit and, and see the value that they're getting uh, from things like automation. And I think, you know, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, available now online for you to learn at your own pace with a certificate available upon completion. Click the link in the show notes to access today for just 50 euros. What's in the cup speaks for itself at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. so I think more people that have great coffee experiences off automated equipment, um, you can't really argue with the results at that point. And so I think that this trend is probably just really going to accelerate. I mean, I've been to some pretty nice boutique cafes that uh, have super automated equipment on the counter now. Um, I know some, you know, very successful competitive baristas that say if I opened a cafe, I would, uh, I would, I would use automated equipment. Um, and I, all of that just is encouraging to me, not just because I work in the realm of automated equipment, but just as kind of a equipment fan and, and coffee nerd at heart, um, I, I'm excited to see the progression. Uh, I don't think that there's ever going to not be a niche or a need for, you know, more barista driven programs, but uh, I, I think a lot of people can really benefit a lot from, from automation. What role does automation play in pricing? do you think? 
Yeah, um, I think that it can do a couple of things there. I mean, I've uh, I've spoken with people that adopt automated equipment, you know, moving on from kind of more traditional equipment, and uh, and it enables them to maybe staff one less person per shift, mm-hmm. uh, which on one hand, um, I've had operators tell me, you know, this equipment paid for itself in three months. And right. that's great. So, so they're saving money. Their business could be more profitable. They can funnel more uh, resources back into the business to facilitate growth. Um, but they can also, you know, pay their staff more. Uh, that's the reality of the market right now yeah. is that, you know, w- wages aren't keeping up with inflation and, and people are hurting. And, it, you know, it's it's a difficult situation for business owners to be in when they want to care really well for the people that are, you know, running their business. Um, but their margins are slim. And so right. I think, you know, um, a lot of people are like, oh, they're just going to put that money in their pocket. But I, th- I think a lot of business owners, especially in coffee, really want to do well for their people. And, you know, if they can, uh, if they can save um, as a result of adopting automated equipment, then they can grow their businesses more, open more units, um, I- employ more people and care for those people better. Do you think that this is a left of field question, but I just kind of thought of it as you were saying what you were saying, which is going to sound strange. Do you think that there's a time when automation and AI are going to start being connected for coffee? I think that uh, I think that's a really interesting question. Um, it's not one that uh, that I've thought a whole lot about. I mean, I can't imagine that it's not going mm. to. Um, I feel like every day I learn of how AI <laughs> is functioning in, in a different area of, of life and, and business. Um, uh, there's a, a, a friend that I have, his name's Muyad, and he is um, piloting a product called Barista GPT. Mm. Um, so you can look that up if you're interested in it, but it's basically um, a AI facilitated ordering system for cafes and this can work online it can work at a kiosk um but instead of just having a kiosk where you cruise through and find your products based on photos or something like that it communicates with you and it asks you questions and makes recommendations like a barista would um i I think there's a lot that's really interesting within that and you know, I think it's a matter of time until that makes its way into automated coffee equipment in, in some way or other. But um, what exactly that will look like, uh, is I don't know that, that I have a good idea. To think that. about. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy, especially to think about, I mean, a year ago, I, I'd barely heard of any of this technology. And now it's it's just a part of everyday life almost. It saves me four hours a week in processing the podcast really wow four hours a week that's crazy it's crazy and just like and the ai that i use costs me 10.99 a month wow not too bad i mean and it's just going to get better yeah which is really exciting and gpt4 and i we are tight bro <laughs> <laughs> I I recently used G, GPT four to help me figure out how to write um, how to approach a situation with an Airbnb host that was uh, being manipulative and gaslighting me, and hey. I had a conversation with GPT four to see if it would have taken the same strategy that I took. <laughs> and the funniest thing it says to me, Lee, in order to advise you. Uh, in order to advise you accurately, I'll need to know more details if you're comfortable sharing them. <laughs> oh, that's a very polite How AI. How considerate if and you're I'm comfortable so sharing cool. them. I was like, geez, is that empathy there? Has this thing yeah. gone AGI now? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of wild, hey? Already. already, yeah. So in the next episode, folks, we're going to talk about the value of data. And uh, I have something specific that I want to ask about with regards to 7-Eleven in this next episode. So data is something that we undervalue, in my opinion, in the coffee industry. And you've got companies like Frankie and like 7-Eleven really leveraging data in order to create plans and to test different products that need to be out there. 
Um, So we're going to talk about stuff like that in the next episode. So please join us. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.